Here on BBC One now, Richard Fairbrass sneaks behind the scenes of the Eurovision Song Contest. In the programme you are about to see, you will meet one artist who looks like a parrot. You will meet another who is as sick as one. It's Monday morning, May the 4th, 1998, in Birmingham's National Indoor Arena. 25 nations gather for the week to attempt to win the world's biggest campus song contest. I find myself here trying to discover what really goes on behind the Euro smiles and kisses. Can they really all be such good friends? Think it was stuff like this. It'd be really interesting to hear the songs that Sweden decided not to enter, wouldn't it? There's a, there's a really big bloke on the end. Look, will you just turn the camera to the stage? That big bloke looks like a train spotter on the left-hand side of the, of the back in vocals. This goes to Millets, the Swedish version of Millets for the clothes there. Now look, this is not a plea for sympathy, but sitting through 25 Euro songs again and again as they struggle to get it right is not my idea of fun or a good night out. I can't even think up there, forget it. The bassist is uh, giving it his all, but he's miming. So's the drummer, so's the guitarist, and so's the keyboard player. But she's not. It's happy. That's the end of it now. Surprising as it may seem, a gutter full of press are desperate to get a sneak preview of the stage design and the acts, so they can all claim a world exclusive. We help you so. So for the next six days, making sure the right people are let in and the wrong people are kept out will be the chief obsession for security supervisor Rob Pullen. There's only a small problem. Number eights aren't allowed backstage. We just wanted to take, want to take the stuff back from the dressing room and go. Well, all the number fours can come yes, through. I know. The eights will have to wear, okay. and sorry, the number seven will have to um, wear as well. Passes with security numbers and photos are Daniel. issued to everyone. Daniel, even the sniffer dogs. We'll just wait for it to be developed, and then we'll make the pass up. Okay. It's got a photo of the dog lights with a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> and it's got wrinkles above the top or whatever his name might be. On stage, Greece are next to rehearse. OK. It's only day one, but already their composer, Yanis Valvis, is not a happy man. Uh, I'm disappointed with uh, this organised here. I'm the, direct, I'm the composer of the song. And I, content, I protest about all of this. That's why I'm not in the screen to play. <laughs> The signal makes six moves. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's a first break. One, two, three, four, five, six. What are these? Chance now to put all those notes down. Members of the diplomatic corps? No, they're really the SAS stormtroop Jedi warriors of the television world. In this room, every country watches a recording of their song and can voice their thoughts on the way the BBC is televising the performance. And it can be war. With a Greek tragedy brewing, they've called in reinforcements Mike Lego, the boss of BBC Light Entertainment, to protect the show's director, who is locked away in the control room. Probably a good thing, too. Can I have a biscuit? Yes, of course. <laughs> uh, just to introduce myself, I'm Ben Cullett, uh, and this is Malcolm Johnson. I'll be taking your comments on cameras and lighting, and Malcolm will be looking after the sound. Look at this. There, just play it there. Make the play. The doily upper. Wow. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. What are these moves? I need six shots to, to, to give a beat to, 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 to the music. Stop, please. And we show the singers now this. One, two, two three. Bit illustrated differently. What, what, he, what he wants. Did you see our video he, he clip? Wants it, he wants it to be more dynamic in that he wants the person, the, the, the singer, to be seen moving. Three, two, one, and drop. On stage, perhaps the only singer whose fame precedes her is about to start her first rehearsal. And everyone's intrigued. Um, a lot of people like the uh, the Israel uh, song, but I think they just there's more of a, a bit of um, a hype thing on the fact that you know. You're, has it been mentioned on the video before? Don't put me on the spot about the uh, the lead singer. <laughs> uh, about the fact that. Uh, <clears throat> So. There's a bit of hype around the loose singer. Let's leave it at that. Let's just say, watch, watch closely when you're watching. <laughs> well, she, I mean, she just, but she just got <laughs> a great chest. <laughs> it's difficult to look poor, you know, look shabby with a chest like that, isn't it? Dana has announced that she doesn't care if she wins or loses. Hmm, if that's true, why has she brought so many personal advisors? Hairstylist, makeup, costume designer, choreographer, voice coach. It seems like all of TV Tel Aviv has come to Birmingham to put in their two pennies worth. Mind you, when it comes to opinions, others aren't short of a few bob. Yes. I think generally you'll agree that, um, no, the main. You don't know what I'm going to say. Eh? No, it's possible to believe it. You can go with camera up. In, in, in basketball, uh, yes. I'm very sorry. In my video clip, there's only one director and, I'm very, I'm and one photographer. Can, can we look no, this, sorry, this video clip, please? You can, you can see Maybe they'd listen to him if he bought a TV license. With only one camera. There is only one director and one camera crew. Oh. There cannot be 25 directors oh. and there cannot be 25 Bachelor camera crews. It's funny. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. Yeah. Listen, yeah. we're in a European community like you. I don't, I don't want for you to, to talk to us with a colonial behavior. Thank you. Thoughtfully, the Israelis have brought their own TV director. Too short that he just missed. Why does it take the whole state from way above, from the ceiling, from I don't know is where, that, from the crane number the, six? Why does is he that do one it? one of the ones you put down to change yesterday? Yes, yes. I bet yes. Ben and Malcolm can't wait to get the Greeks out so they can move on to him. We just have to make, we just don't have, need just have so to put much. Change. It has a turn, a uh, clockwise turn. And I didn't see this. I wrote it that before the next practice. Uh, Excuse me. Is there anybody to listen to me about the. Uh, the is there anybody who wants to listen to me? Can we clear the room, please, now? Thank you. Can we make our way out of the room? Yeah, don't believe it. What's now, tea time? I say pass, please, sir. Rob is still trying to sort out the performers from those who just want to get near that stage. Thanks. Two gay Italian men, long hair, walking through. <laughs> I said, excuse me, Jane Summer, and they're going, hello, yes. I've just come out of there now. <laughs> I said, uh, I said, I know you just come out of there, but you, sh you shouldn't have been in there in the first place. They're going to try every trick in the book. I'm going to get in trouble now because you're like distracting. Huh? In the viewing room, Ben and Malcolm are about to face the next vicious attack. Oh, sorry, creative comments. Do we do we have to receive all these uh, effects? effects? The cloud is it's too much. Yeah, it's I have to it now there's a delay that goes with the song, which is 447 milliseconds.
It's still only day one, but already everyone's starting to get a little tense. She walked out, she walked out here, right? And then instead of telling us to go back, like I told you, don't let any sevens cross over the path. Just tell us to walk straight across there. Because this is the most important part in the song. And if you came to take all the hands, you because this is the most important part in the song. And if you came to take all the hands, because the costume is too big. Okay, well, hang on. Let's just. Is one of the songs bigger? I should have sent it around. What security guard? It's my mistake, yeah. What security guard? I sent it over there. It's my mistake. You should have sent it around. What did I say? Don't let it through the door. I made a mistake. It's a mess, and I was almost asleep. Which is very good. The vocal from the beginning of the song, but not as loud as in that place. And all the. Can I just note that, please? Yes. So you admit that you made a mistake? Of course I've made a mistake. So why did you make it again? How can you make two mistakes in one day? I'm stressed out, that's why. It's little tiny cracks that turn into bigger no, ones. That and then woman, there's just yeah. people walking willy nilly through there. I was talking to her, yeah, I was talking to her, and the woman and walked, out, you... walked out, she walked out. She walked out. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. It's the first reversal. There are many things to do be fixed. Uh, do you think they will be fixed? Are you feeling confident? If they are not going to be fixed, we will force them to fix them. <laughs> but I'm sure it's going to be all right. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, I got to note 17 there. That was an express train. If everybody Wasn't saw it just? one. <laughs> I think Germany will be in in a minute. Oh. Everyone, including me, wants to get close to Dana. Yeah. Fat chance of intimacy in this bun fight as the world's press battled to get a word in edgeways with Eurovision's most intriguing entry. She's the chief security lad. She's in charge of all the security. She just said, don't say anything, and I've done half a film. <laughs> uh, they surprised me negative. Uh, what I mean, I protest uh, because... At the Greek I press conference, Yanis wants to tell the whole world of his grievances. And uh, this is my protest uh, written. The world isn't necessarily ready to listen. Mr. Bishop, the executive producer, because it's possible to have uh, some fault or some mistake or some misunderstanding. Day two in Euroland starts with some much needed rest and relaxation. Anyone seen Millets? <laughs> After her wobbly start, I felt Dionysia, the Greek entry, could do with a little retail therapy. And what she wants is something fancy. <laughs> <laughs> wow! I thought there was going to be. Um... A gap here. Maybe yes, exactly. That's what I, like yes, that's what I thought was going to happen. I don't know because I have stomach. You have stomach. Well, if you didn't have stomach, all your food would drop out. <laughs> are you going to run into the audience? Yes. Yeah. Right. Back at the arena, rehearsals are in full swing again. Mr. Anti-Fashion Gildo Horn from Germany has come with a reputation for anarchic outrage. Yeah, I'll test it. Though. Don't go. Don't go mad now. Don't, don't do too much. But I'll test it later on. Do it. Uh, oh. But, as any anarchist will tell you, anarchy takes a lot of careful planning. OK, so that gives us a rough idea, and then, then you just yeah. improvise. Locked away in his control room, the BBC's director, Jeff Posner, has to make sure it's all going to appear on screen. Somewhere. I'll let you know in a minute. Oh, brilliant. With that is first thing you think is this is complete crap. And then I'm sitting here thinking, maybe this is exactly what I mean, who else is doing this? I mean every other country is saying, oh let's get somebody cute, let's get somebody pretty, let's get somebody who's you know 18 and a half years old. The Germans come up with this madman. <laughs> <laughs> or on camera. <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, you know, most musicians spend most of their time trying to stay really cool and really hip and really, you know, in tune and blah, blah, blah. And he obviously doesn't give a toss. As part of the responsibility of running Eurovision, the BBC is charged with making sure everything is fair. For example, every country must finish their song within three minutes. One second over, and they're out. Now, it might not sound like it, but Turkey's song is the result of months of hard work for the composer, weeks huddled over the manuscript for the arranger, extensive rehearsal by the conductor, and the culmination of a lifetime preparation for the singer, Tuzman. After all that hard work, you'd have thought they'd have bothered to time it. Three. Three seconds over. And how much rehearsal time have we got left? We've got six minutes left. Well, the only option now is to play the notes faster. <laughs> it is, look. It's got hemi-demi-semi-quavers. It's got septapular hemi-demi-semi-dim-dams. And clusters of those. And what are they? Difficult. OK, we'll do one more very quickly, then. Something else I'm still looking forward to is meeting Dana. I had no luck getting close to her at the press conference. Maybe my backstage pass will do the trick in the green room. Hmm, maybe not. Now, the thing is, I'm sitting here like a prune. We're waiting to do an interview with Dana International. She's teasing us by walking backwards and forwards like this all the time. Can you get that in? She's on the phone doing an interview. And uh, <laughs> it's peekaboo. It's months of tension and uh, She's just being difficult. She knows why we're here. My hopes for a few minutes with Dana are as nothing compared to Turkey's need to lose seconds off their song. Yeah, unfortunately, they are 11 seconds over. So um, I think we might have to adjust that. Poor chap. <laughs> we are here. Yo, so glad to meet you. Hello, nice to meet you too. You're much more sexier in real life. Am I? So I wasn't yeah. sexy at all on the video. You upset me. Oh, no. Oh, thanks, guys. Just as I thought I was getting close to an exclusive one to one. You guys? But I'm determined to get to the bottom of Israel's entry. Would that be possible? I cannot uh, answer right now because we, I have to talk with my managers and uh, she already spoke with them. It's the end of the day's rehearsals. The last scene is being shot. It's about the only chance Ben has to pass on his heavily censored notes to Jeff, the director who's kept safely away from the delegates. Oh, no. No, no, no. Hmm? <laughs> now, down. No, you're, you're down. 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 <laughs> uh, Greece. Um, I kind of gave up after a while taking notes because it all got a bit... Yeah. ...emotive. The competitors are working hard at relaxing. Birmingham is a city which is green, clean, and very lovely. Hmm, some a little too hard. Yeah, that's right. This is something we'll never forget in Birmingham. That's, That's right. right. Yeah. Different countries, different styles. We're still friends. And beautiful as well. <laughs> Have a close-up on that one. Not everyone has time to party. After all, this competition is a big number. When it's televised, over 100 million people will be watching. It needs to look really spectacular. Now, let's see a bill there. And now what does that leave? It's 23 to go, doesn't it? It's going to be a long night. It's going to be a long night. It's the penultimate day, and I've got my promised five minutes with Dana in her hotel room. You were talking about the competition, the Eurovision being a... Um, a song contest and not a sexual contest. Yeah. Now, inevitably, the, sex the, the sexual sexuality of you is an issue, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it has to be because everybody is. That's curious. Yeah, it's curious. <laughs> yes. So, do you? Does it? Does that bother you? I mean, are you just going to? Have you just said to yourself, "I'll live with it"? Or it's not bothering me. It, it bothered me at first. You know, I'm having a career for six years in Israel, and I can tell you that uh, the Israeli journalists are the most. Uh, 
arrogant and unpolite in the world. I wanted to meet the journalist and give him a punch in his face. Oh, you want <laughs> this is going on a bad day, isn't it? I did isn't it. it. <laughs> have you ever punched a journalist? Uh, have, you I... ever, have you ever come close to just going whack? I am breaking cameras. I didn't even know that gay people like Eurovision. Did, I mean, it They're didn't even... Lovely. I know, it was only when I came up here that it struck me that it was a... They are the most incredible fans all over the world for the Eurovision, you know? Do you know why that is? I mean, why would they like... What is it about Eurovision? Because they like, like competitions. It's not because of the songs, like it's because of the competition. They like beauty contests, they like song contests, they like everything that involves with pick up the <laughs> phone and vote and who is going to win and right. which singer is going to be the nice year. The thing about holidays is that, if, as you say, you're say, going with some really close friends yeah. and, just, and just completely chill out. And also, go, as you say, go somewhere where you're not recognised. Yeah, like, you know. to do very naughty things. What sort of naughty no one things can... would you do? Oh, secrets. No, no, no. You, no Not in front of the camera. You don't have any secrets no, no, from me. No, no, no. I'll tell you, just do that, and then you can mouth it to me. But they can hear. No, no, just mouth it to me. What's the, whisper it in my ear, whisper it in my ear. Go on. <laughs> Go on. Back at the arena, more rehearsals are underway, and Yanis has another chance to air his considerable grievances. It's also Turkey's last chance to try to speed things up before the big night. Seven seconds. Oh, yeah, it's three seven. Actually. Three seven. That's quite a bit. It has to move on, isn't it? Seven seconds. Okay. Oh, okay. Three seven again. I always love romantic songs, and uh, as soon as I start singing on the stage, I just uh, go into another world that I'm living the song there. I mean, I feel it fully, right in my heart, so that I can perform better. Tuzman's going to have to get all his emotion into three minutes, with a little help from the band, though no one seems quite sure how. Sound very good. I mean, most of the tracks that we're playing on have got click tracks where you, 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 you work into a solid metre on that. So it's going to be the sa exactly the same every time, but this hasn't, so... And you, uh, it wouldn't be right to play it to a click track. Too romantic. And... So... I need to lie down now. It's a lot of notes. Excuse me, can you turn yeah. your phone off, please? Poor old Yanis is still keen to get someone to listen to his grievances. Frankly, anyone. Okay. Not a problem. You know, the viewing is good, the directing is good, the sound is good, the balance is good, the lighting is good. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, have, we have a problem with the orchestra only, I think, the timing. It's the first dress rehearsal, and the performers aren't the only ones still struggling to get their act together. In the gap between the German and Maltese entries, the stage crew have to bring off a whole kit of instruments and replace them with a forest of candles, all in 30 seconds. Speed and candle wax are not a happy mix. It's all over my glasses, isn't it? And look, I've been dancing. What did I do? Round the back, I've met Harry. He does the floor. Now stay with me on this. It's interesting. Look, an original member of the Who. And they were called the Detours then. So who was in the Detours originally? You and John, Roger and I. Roger played lead guitar then. Right. And uh, Pete joined afterwards. Right, right. And then um, when Pete joined, it just got bigger and bigger. And so, at what point did you peel off? Why did you? The wrong, the wrong, the wrong part. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a wise move, that Harry, was it? <laughs> I've got to be enough. honest with you. It's one of the Greeks' final rehearsals. Not content just to be the spokesman, Yanis is now on stage himself. Why? I go up 
up on the, on the stage to play my bass and they, they didn't give me any bass. The guitar player didn't listen anything from the monitor. They're at least silly. They're funny. I'm, I'm, I'm a surprise. I, go, I went to the stage to play a bass. I'm talking to the people here, please. You want to talk with them? You need to go to the green room, please. I go to the green room. And then... It's Saturday and it's show day. And the Greeks are a bit short on numbers. And there are two people missing. Yanis has been refused entry to the arena and disqualified from the contest. Well, they're in a meeting at the moment to see whether they're going to go on. So I, mean, I think if they don't go on, France are just going to go on instead of them. They're due on in two minutes. Unfortunately, Yanis, uh, the Greek composer, just didn't heed the formal request from EBU and us. We said, please don't walk onto the stage during rehearsal. Uh, he did it again, and uh, we have, we've had to withdraw his accreditation. It just comes a point where you just think, well, the security of the show becomes first, and that's it. After a long meeting to discuss the disqualification of Yanis, Greece are suddenly back in the green room. They have decided to perform without him. Oh, this is a nightmare. But if they don't make it on stage in time for their dress rehearsal, Greece will be out of the competition altogether. Hold on. And the clock is ticking. Hi, I, I need you around here now because you, you're on in one minute. Okay. Go uh, okay. to Andrea. One of the Greece guitars, the guy with the beard, is now not playing. He's not performing. Clearly, Dana has not had to rush her toilet. This will be our first glimpse of her stage outfit, a specially designed costume by Jean-Paul Gaultier. I have to say, it's a bit of a shock. Looks like a parrot. I think they've tried too hard. She's, she's a really attractive woman, and it works really well when she's just being loose. And what they've done is they put this Jean-Paul Gaultier top on, and they put the hair up, and the makeup, and all that. And it's all gone a little bit arch and a bit kind of, uh, I don't know, a little bit self-conscious, I suppose, is what it is. My feeling is she looks better with her, her hair down. What do I know? I don't have any hair at all. After a week of frenetic and often emotional preparation, this is it. Well, nothing happens in Birmingham normally. You want to win something special? I don't want to it's brilliant for Birmingham. It's a good, it's a good boost for it's Birmingham. It's just nice really. that it's in Birmingham because you know we live here and that's it. <laughs> it's finally time for the Eurovision Song Contest itself. It's. Uh... Seven minutes to go, and it's really exciting. I mean, it's exactly what I thought would happen, which is the whole week's been like a kind of, well, you know, I don't know how you're going to feel about it. But once you see the crowd in here, and they've all got flags, and they're all incredibly motivated, and they're going to be, they're really going to go for it, I think, tonight. I think it's going to be really, really exciting. I'm getting all kind of jittery. It's, it's really good, and even backstage, you can really feel it now. It's the climax of a year's build-up for all the teams, but not everyone's where they thought they'd be on the night. Welcome to celebrate the 43rd Eurovision Song Contest. Yanis has to content himself with watching, in exile, from his hotel room. I just want to wish you good luck. Have a wonderful show. I know it's been a difficult thing for you this, this week. Thank you. But it'll be great, and you'll enjoy it. The crowd are great. The lady singing is Dionysia Karoki, the group of Talasa, meaning C, written by Yanis Valdis, Yanis Malachias, <laughs> Malachias. BBC Concert Orchestra conducted by Martin Koch. Secret Illusion from Greece. Face, the camera face. When, when somebody walks in, in a fashion, where do you put the camera? In front of the, of the model. <laughs>
The pressure's off for Greece, but others will still have to pull off the performance of their lives. At the last minute, Dana's dropped the whole Gaultier look. Yeah, you're going to be great. You're going to be great. Hope so. It was good in rehearsal. Hope so. The flag make me a little bit nervous. Yeah, but the crowd is great. Yeah, and, too and, great. Too noisy. Too, well, no, they're very noisy, but you've got lots of friends out there, lots yeah, of Israeli yeah. flags. So I think you'll find it's fantastic. You're going to really enjoy it. Hope so. Yeah. Working on it. The Israel uh, lady, the lady, okay, the Israel lady makes similar, similar uh, moves with my singer. And they shot at her, not only with rapid shots, but with the digital filters and digitally, with the digital beams. And I noticed. Diva! As Gildo's much practice mayhem ends, the stage crew stand by with their high tech solution to the low tech problem of dripping candles. And please don't try this at home. Go! The crew might have saved themselves from the dangers of candle wax, but Yanis is still smarting over the moment he was thrown out of Euroland. Uh, two person hold me just like I'm a, I'm a prisoner, and they take me to the area where nobody is, and uh, someone take uh, this car from my neck and uh, crash the chain and say, now I'll live from here. Just, uh, just I was a criminal. And you see, you see something? My, God, my grandmother lives in Scotland. You know, there's sometimes in a man's life that comes twice or maybe once in all his lifetime. And that's one of them. Tonight, tonight. So I must use it. Never mind all that tosh, tours. Just get on and get off in under three minutes. So what we're going to do, the minute he starts, we're going to time it. If he gets it within three minutes, everything is cool. If he goes over three minutes, they're out for the count. Fifty-nine and forty-six. So we're going to need to. Uh, we're going to need to get some more people. Time's a bit of a challenge for Rob's last task too. The interval act, who will entertain the audience while the votes are being counted, need to be given security clearance before they can go on stage. He will have two minutes to get a male voice choir, full brass band, forty Scottish pipers, forty Zulus. Oh yeah, and the thirty Bangra dancers onto the stage. Okay, stand by, United Kingdom. You're next. Okay. Go, go. Meanwhile, backstage, the show's become a bit of a blur. 
Okay, go, go. The 25 entrances, performances and exits race by in a flurry of showbiz mayhem. <laughs> And in the midst of it all, Rob got the interval act through on time. Suddenly, after a week of rehearsals, with hundreds of performances, enough lyrics to paper the inside of the Albert Hall and tension to support the Millennium Dome, the final countdown. And this is it. Yeah, it all turns on this vote now. All turns on this vote. Calm down, calm down. Come in. Just a little hiatus here, ladies and gentlemen. We can't find them. Just a moment, hiatus. Obviously, the winners are celebrated not wisely, but too well. Who's a pretty girl then? <laughs> For Dana, this could be the peak of her career. Others, meanwhile, are lost in a veil of tears and sick. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to stop here or anywhere. I'm going to fight this situation for all my life. Even 10, 10 years past, 20, 20 years, I don't need this Eurovision song for this for me. all the hopes that came in at the beginning of the week, all the aspirations that it could, you know, their careers could go anywhere, and it's all, you know, for, for most of them now, it's just gone through the floor. The audience saw the artist, and the, and the artist was performing their song, and then the audience picked up the phone and they said, we like it or we don't like it. There was no style fascist from some magazine in London saying, like this or don't like it. And that was what was really powerful. Wow, after 20 years, the Orthodox will die. <laughs> they will die. They're going to have such a bad night tonight. They will never sleep again peacefully and calmly. <laughs> I think it's cool now. 